Hello everyone. Um, my name is Spencer Allingham um, and I'm the Regional Vice President uh, at Conducive for the Europe, Middle East and Africa region. <laughs> but please, I don't want the, uh, the, the title to fool you. I, I, I'm actually more of a, a technical engineer. In fact, before I was recently uh, promoted, I was actually the technical director at Conducive for roughly the last seven years. So if it's okay with everyone, um, I'll, I'll keep this reasonably technical and, and I'll try not to make it too much of a, a sales and marketing pitch. I, I hope that's okay with everyone. <laughs> um, so today, what I'd like to do is introduce you to the Velocity software that you can use to speed up your SQL servers without having to reboot machines and without any SQL code changes being necessary. Uh, really, you just install and go. It's, it's that simple. So to illustrate why you might want to consider downloading and installing the Velocity software onto your SQL servers, I ran some lab tests using HammerDB to generate an online transaction processing type workload with and without the Velocity software installed. Firstly, using SSD storage and then using slower spinning disk storage. And as you can see from the metrics recorded by HammerDB, on SSD storage, there was about a 30% improvement in the number of SQL transactions that could be processed per minute. And this was backed up by performance monitor metrics that showed roughly a 28% improvement in transactions per second. And then when running the tests again using spinning hard drive storage, there was around a 100% improvement. Now, either way, this is great news for SQL DBAs who care about the performance of the databases underpinning their business critical applications. So whether you're running SQL in a physical or a virtualized environment, most SQL DBAs would welcome faster storage at a reasonable price. And Conducive's Velocity software is designed to provide exactly that but using the storage hardware that you already own. It doesn't matter if you've got direct attached disks, if you're running a tiered SAN, have a tray of SSD storage, or are fortunate enough to have an all flash array, that storage layer can be a limiting factor to your SQL database's productivity. And the Velocity software reduces the amount of storage I.O. traffic that actually has to go out and be processed by the disk storage layer. And it streamlines or optimizes the data which does still have to go out to disk. And the net result is that SQL can get more transactions completed in the same amount of time, quite simply because on average, it's not having to wait so much on the storage before being able to get on with its next transaction. And Velocity can be downloaded and installed without any disruption to live SQL servers. There are no SQL code changes required and absolutely no reboots. You just install the software and typically you'll start seeing results in just a few minutes. And before we take a, a more in-depth look at that, I'd like to briefly mention that last year, the Velocity software was awarded the Microsoft SQL Server IO Reliability Certification, which is quite a mouthful. <laughs> um, basically, what that means is that whilst providing faster storage access, the Velocity software didn't adversely affect the required and recommended behaviors that an IO subsystem must provide for SQL as defined by Microsoft themselves. Now, most SQL DBAs are familiar with why split pages are bad for performance. If you've got room and your update or insert doesn't require a split, well, this is pretty fast because SQL is just updating one page and then writing it out to disk and, of course, to the transaction log. But if the updated or inserted row doesn't fit, SQL needs to allocate a new page, move about half of the rows to the new page, and then write both pages to disk and to the transaction log. And in addition, the pages and all the indexes that point to the data pages, well, they need to be updated too. So let's say as an example that your table had one clustered index and four non-clustered indexes 
that would mean at least seven pages would need to be updated. You'd have one for the clustered index structure, four for the non-clustered indexes, and two in the data pages in the clustered index. So this page split would result in a minimum of seven times the I.O. as an insert or update that didn't require a page split. Now, the important thing is that each I.O. that takes place takes a measurable amount of time and resource to process. And the same is true when the Windows file system splits data as it writes out to the logical NTFS volume. And that can have significant performance ramifications too. And this is basically why SQL DBAs tend to format volumes to be used by SQL with a 64K cluster size rather than leaving the NTFS default of just 4K. It helps to avoid split I.O. situations when writing to disk and keeps performance losing file fragmentation from building up so quickly. But it doesn't actually completely fix the problem, though. As your NTFS file systems mature over time and files get created and extended and deleted, the free space on the NTFS volume will become more and more fragmented into smaller and smaller free space extents, increasing those split I.O. situations with writing. And each time your write gets split in this way, the data is being sent out to disk in a separate I.O. packet. And like split pages in SQL, each I.O. takes a measurable amount of time and resource to process. So in the real world, a gigabyte of storage I.O. traffic that should be written in 2,000 or 3,000 storage I.O.s could now be taking 30,000 or 40,000 I.O.s to complete. And we call the performance penalty that these split I.O. situations cause the Windows I.O. tax, as in a tax on your performance due to the split I.O.s. In a virtualized environment, this performance penalty can be amplified by something called the I.O. blender effect. And what's happening here is that you have small fractured I.O. packets coming from the virtual machines and as they pass through the hypervisor, the hypervisor mixes these I.O. streams together, causing a randomization effect. So then what comes out between that physical host hypervisor and the disk storage controller is now really a, a chaotic mess of small, fractured, and now very randomized I.O. streams that, frankly, by the time they hit the storage controller, they couldn't be less storage friendly. It means that the storage controller is really only receiving data in very small packets at a time, so it now only has the opportunity to create very small stripes across its media, and that means many more storage level operations. And if the data hadn't been split as it was being written all the way up at the NTFS layer. So the Velocity software helps Windows avoid or prevent most of the excess, unnecessary, performance-losing split I.O. traffic and replaces it with far fewer storage I.O. packets, each one carrying a larger payload of data. And this makes the movement of data between server and storage quite simply more efficient, uh, much like avoiding page splits wherever possible in SQL. And it allows the disk storage to store the data using far fewer storage level operations. Velocity will also help create those nice large free space extents quietly and automatically in the background using only otherwise idle compute resources to make it easier for the Windows write driver to write into. So, Think for a moment of a busy motorway at rush hour. Think, think of something like the M25 that goes around London. Imagine that you've got lots of cars sitting bumper to bumper with one person in each car, and none of them are getting anywhere very quickly. You, know, you can just imagine the miserable look on those <laughs> poor souls' faces as they're stuck in that traffic jam. Now, imagine that each car on the motorway is a storage I.O. packet, and each person in each car is your data. What Velocity is in effect doing is taking 
all of the people out of the cars and placing them in buses or coaches and removing all of the small cars from the motorway and getting rid of all of that congestion so that now all the people or your data can now flow to their destination in a much more efficient manner. <laughs> I hope that makes sense as an analogy. <laughs> but really, that's only half of the story. Velocity also introduces a RAM caching technique into the Windows OS that further reduces the read I.O. traffic that the backend storage has to deal with. And the performance benefits provided are in addition to SQL's own buffering and any caching natively provided by the Windows OS. And this basically is how we could get 30% more SQL transactions done in the same amount of time during that testing that I mentioned before. Quite simply, SQL could get more work done in the same amount of time because it wasn't having to wait so much on the disk storage layer before being able to get on with its next transaction and because basically RAM is faster than disk storage. Oh, and it absolutely works in both physical and virtualized SQL servers and in the cloud as well. If you're running SQL in uh, Microsoft Azure or AWS, absolutely fine. Storage IO reduction, optimization, and RAM caching represent a significant reduction in workload that has to be processed by the backend disk storage. This is not only true of SQL Server's storage traffic, but other workload types too. So in this example on the screen, let's say that the first VM is hosting SQL, and the second is hosting the application that interfaces with SQL, and the other two VMs, maybe they're hosting busy file servers, and they're all sharing that same backend storage. You might have a situation where the traffic from the file servers are taxing the performance of SQL, by keeping the storage layer busy. So SQL isn't necessarily the cause of the disk storage being slow, but it would likely be affected by the increased disk IO queue depths and increased storage latency being caused by the busy workloads on the file servers. So my recommendation would be to install the Velocity software on all Windows machines sharing the same backend storage. That way, from the point of view of the storage, it's now simply doing the least amount of work, regardless of which virtual machine or, or physical machine is generating the most workload at any given time. Now, at this point, some of you will probably be thinking, ah, yes, but SQL is already using most of the available memory in the machine. How can you possibly create a RAM cache? And it's true that if SQL is left uncapped, there typically wouldn't be enough RAM for our software to create a cache with. We've intentionally designed our software so that it can't compete for system resources with anything else that's running. So basically, we can never be the cause of a memory starvation situation. Velocity would only use some of the free RAM that isn't being used by anything else, and it will dynamically size its cache, handing RAM back to Windows if other processes or applications need it. So for best results, you can easily cap the amount of RAM that SQL takes for its own form of caching or, or buffering. On busy database servers, if you can leave 16 gig of RAM free, you'd have a velocity cache size that would really be enough to make that machine's performance fly in most cases. And if you can't spare 16 gig, leave 8 gig free. And if you can't afford 8 gig, leave 4 gig free. Even that is enough to make a difference. If you go much smaller than that, though, then in my experience, the cache size would really be a little bit too small, and any performance improvements would then become limited. You might also be thinking that, well, do you know what? SQL's buffering is actually good enough. So how does Velocity's caching complement this? And at a basic level, SQL's cache does do a pretty good job. And whilst that has a positive impact on performance, Velocity's RAM caching is designed to eliminate the type of storage I.O. traffic that tends to slow the storage down the most. And whilst that tends to be the smaller, more random read I.O. traffic, actually it's not always the case. 
And that's why the software uses a very lightweight storage filter driver to gather telemetry data. And this allows the software to learn useful things like what is the main application in use on a machine? Uh, what type of files are being accessed and what type of storage I.O. streams are being generated? And at what times of the day, the week, the month, the quarter? So it can be very intelligent about what the hot blocks of data are that need to be in the RAM cache and more importantly, when. And it can also use that telemetry to figure out how best to size the storage I.O. packets to give that main application the best performance. And if the way you use that machine changes over time, well, Velocity can automatically adapt to those changes without you having to reconfigure or tweak any of its settings. Validating results is really easy. Um, you know, first of all, you could measure the amount of SQL transactions being done each day to see if they increase. Some customers see reports that they generate take less time to produce, or SQL imports take less time. Uh, batch jobs might start completing more quickly. Some customers have even done a simple stopwatch test to measure record retrieval times. But Velocity itself comes with very transparent reporting that will show you exactly how much storage I.O. traffic it's able to eliminate from all having to go out to the disk storage layer. And you can see what percentage of the reads and writes are being eliminated. And it'll show you how much storage time is being saved by the storage not having to process all of that eliminated I.O. Now, if you're using thin provisioned storage, Velocity can also help you reclaim space. So if you're using thin provisioned VMDK files in a VMware environment, for example, it can automatically zero out free space so that you don't have to wait for hours for an S-delete pass to complete. And if you're thin provisioning down at the storage layer, Maybe you've got a NetApp filer or an HP 3Pass SAN or a Dell Compellent SAN or something like that. It can also send SCSI unmapped commands down to the storage controller to notify it of blocks that are no longer needed. And by the way, that also works with VVOLs in uh, VMware, which can be quite helpful too. And if your uh, virtual machines are provisioned with dynamically allocated RAM instead of a, a fixed amount of RAM, such that the hypervisor can borrow some RAM back to reallocate to some other VM. It's important for best results to make sure that you reserve enough RAM in your SQL VM's configuration for both SQL and velocity. Otherwise, you could have a situation where too much RAM in the VM will become driver locked by the hypervisor's ballooning driver. And basically, that would mean that Velocity might not get enough RAM to cache with effectively. Now, these are just some of the case studies that you can access on our website at conducive.com. There are a whole bunch more, and I, <laughs> I'm not going to give you death by PowerPoint by, <laughs> by reading through all of these. But I'll, I'll pick up one example, which is Bell Mobility on the bottom left. They're a, a telecoms company in Canada, and they saw the Velocity software reduce the storage I.O. traffic to their SAN by 61%. And now, that's huge. You know, and, and a storage I.O. reduction of 61%, that's massive. And this gave them SQL report queries that were three times faster. With no additional hardware being required, all they had to do was install the Velocity software, which, as I mentioned earlier, is completely non-disruptive. No SQL code changes required, no reboots required, and zero disruption to live running workloads. So in terms of next steps, the first thing I would encourage you to do is, is share what you've learned in this session with some of your colleagues and, and friends in the industry. See what they have to say about this type of I.O. reduction and, and caching technology. You might find that some of them are already using it. Um, 
But the simplest and best way to test velocity is just try it for yourself with your real-world workloads. You know, I don't want you to take my word for any of this. I would much rather let the software and the results speak for themselves and have you try it. Um, and everyone who's attending today will receive a full copy of the software from Conducive directly worth £400 if you're in the UK or €450. Euros. Make sure you follow the best practice tips for best results and ensure you leave at least 4 gig of RAM to cache with. Um, and you can also try the software on all of your machines at once with the 30-day trialware version that actually you can download right now from conducive.com slash try. Don't go there yet because I haven't quite finished. <laughs> but yes, you can get the 30-day trial and install it on everything. And um, you know, if, you, if you want to, you're very welcome to share the report data from our software with a conducive engineer like myself and get additional analysis that's tailored to your specific environment and get a written engineer's report. That's completely free, no obligation. You know, it, it's in our interest to make sure that you get the best results from the trialway. So you're very welcome to have one of our engineers assist you if you want to. Um, the email shown on the screen will get you directly connected with the lead engineer for each region. So even if you have any questions after the presentation, you're very welcome to, to get in touch. But if you have any questions right now, please do put them into that Q&A box. And, and any that come through, I'll, I'll do my best to answer in just a moment. So if your organization could benefit from faster storage at a reasonable price, using the storage hardware that you already own, that you've already bought and paid for, I would urge you give it a try. You're not going to disrupt any live running workloads. You don't have to make any SQL code changes. And the whole download and installation will take no more than a few minutes. Use the software to not only identify those servers that cause storage IO issues and latency, but fix those issues at the same time. So. I hope that's been interesting. Let, let me uh, fire up the Q&A box and the chat box and see if we've got any questions that have come through. Here we go. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Uh, right. So uh, Mahesh says, can we have the recording after the webinar? Yes, absolutely. I'm recording this, and it will come out to everybody. Um, Matthew says, uh, very kind license gift. Thank you. You're very welcome. That That is a, a full free copy. That's, that's not the trialware that everyone's going to receive. It's a full version of the software. Put it onto a SQL server or, or some other busy server and, and see what it can do. and get Have a good play with the software. Um, Animesh says, does this work with files as well? Yes, it does. Um, in fact, when you're um, writing data, we can avoid many of those split I.O. situations, which makes the transfer of data between server and storage a lot more efficient. It means the, the data is arriving down at the storage controller in much larger chunks at a time, and it gives that storage controller the opportunity to create those larger, unbroken stripes across its media. That's not only more efficient when writing, but also if you need to read that data back in at a later time as well. Um, in terms of the RAM caching, what we're doing is identifying hot blocks of data. So we're not having to cache entire files. I mean, if you think, if you were trying to cache an entire SQL database file, well, it's very likely that not all of that SQL database is going to be hot data. So it'll pick out the blocks of data that are hot and get those in the RAM cache to make it as, as efficient as possible. Um, so... Let's see. Well, we've got lots of questions coming through. <laughs> um, Lewis says, thanks for the presentation. Is it also available for Oracle databases? Yes, as long as that Oracle database is running on Windows. It will absolutely work. In fact, we've got a couple of case studies where people have been using Oracle and had great results. Um, Mahesh says again, how will we receive the free copy? We will email you a download link, and you'll be able to download it. You should get that later on today. Um, 
Lee says, can't wait to try it, having a few issues with one particular application. Brilliant. If you want any help from me personally, Lee, you're very welcome to uh, reach out to me directly. Um, my email address is this one, srseamir at conducive.com, and you can also call me on that number as well if you want any assistance with that. Um, so, uh, so Paul says, do you... Do you do any bulk licensing if you want to apply this software across our estate? That's a great question, and yes, we absolutely do. First of all, we offer quantity discounts, so there are different price breaks depending on how many uh, copies of the software that you want. So basically, the more licenses you buy, the cheaper the unit cost becomes. Um, but to help people who are running virtual environments that want to put it across all of their VMs, the most popular way of, of purchasing the software and the most cost effective usually is to buy what we call a host based license. So what that does is it licenses the physical host hypervisors, so that would be your VMware ESXi box or your Hyper-V server, and that gives you the right to install the software onto as many virtual machines as you want to host within that licensed host. And it also means if you generate new VMs on that host, well, you're automatically licensed to uh, put the software onto those machines as well. So I hope that answers that. Um, and also, if anybody wants to take advantage of, of volume um, discounts, please, again, reach out to us and we can provide you with a no obligation quotation that's tailored to match your environment. And I have to say that the sales guys are very good at, at making sure you can get the software for the right price for your environment. Um, okay, let's see what other questions have we got? There's loads have come through. Um, Michael says, does the SQL Server need a reboot once the software has been installed? Another great question. No, it does not. Um, absolutely no reboots are required. You can install Velocity and uninstall it without having to reboot any Windows system. Uh, so Lee says again, uh, will there be an improvement just installing it on the SQL Server? Applications are on other VMs. Um, actually, it's not just designed for SQL Server. I know this particular um, slide deck was tailored very much towards SQL, but um, I would suggest any Windows Server that is running applications that are particularly active with the storage, that's where you want to get the software installed, not just on SQL Server machines. So I'm not saying as an engineer that this is a silver bullet for every type of workload because it's not. You know, if you've got something like a DHCP server, that's not going to be generating huge amounts of storage IO traffic. And this software really isn't going to set the world alight if you install it on there. But if you've got things like SQL, Oracle, uh, SQL Express, MySQL, MariaDB, um, Yes, it will work very well because those applications tend to be generating a lot of storage I.O. traffic. We've also got people using it on ERP environments like Sage, for example, um, also SAP, um, business information systems like IBM Cognos. Uh, basically, anything, even a busy file server, as I mentioned before, or any, any Windows machine that's generating a lot of storage traffic, that's really where you want to install this software. So I hope that answers that. Um, so, uh, Ed's got a great question. He says, isn't this largely doing just what the SAN's own caching would do? Also, I may have missed this as I was distracted by someone, <laughs> but it looks like it's VM level. Wouldn't it be better to run this sort of thing at the hypervisor level? Okay, that's actually two great questions. So I'll, I'll try and answer both of those. Um, so he says, isn't this largely doing what the SAN's own caching would do? Yes, but it has benefits over the uh, caching down at the SAN level. Um, and it would be very complementary to any caching that you are doing down at the SAN level. The reason why it's very good to use the caching software in Velocity is that it is as close as we can possibly get it to the applications that are requesting to read that data. So number one, it's a very short IO path. Number two, if you've got a tray of SSD, for example, in the tier one of your SAN, 
or even an SSD in the host hypervisor, they're great, but RAM is still faster. So if you're using a, a tray of SSD as the tier one cache in your SAN, use the Velocity software's cache as your tier zero, if you like, using even faster RAM. So I hope that answers that. Oh, there's an, another good benefit of having the software installed in the VM as opposed to at the hypervisor layer. And that is, it's within the VM when data is being written that it will tend to get split up. And then once it gets split, each piece of that write gets sent out all the way down the storage stack to the storage controller in a separate I.O. packet. So it's at that layer inside the VM that we can avoid and prevent most of that split I.O. traffic from happening. If you try and do it down at the hypervisor layer, well, basically you can't. It's too late. The data's already been split. So I hope that answers that. Um, so so, what else? Ah, Mike says, is there velocity available for Linux? Mike, I'm sorry to disappoint you. No, there isn't. This is a, a Windows only uh, product. I'm, I'm sorry about that. We do have something similar on our long term roadmap for Linux, but I, I, at this stage, I don't know when that's going to be available to the public. So I, I apologize for that. Um, what I can say is if you're running um, a mixed environment where you've got some Linux VMs, for example, and, and a whole bunch of Windows VMs or Windows servers, and they're all sharing the backend storage, well, clearly this software will reduce the I.O. requirement coming out of the Windows part of the estate and will tax the storage less heavily so that you'll get reduced storage I.O. queue depths, reduced storage latency, and those Linux machines will be able to take advantage of that by default. But unfortunately, we don't have this software to install directly on Linux, so apologies for that. Um, Okay, so Mahesh says, also kindly include how to set up on physical environment and on a VM platform. Okay, so the software gets installed into the Windows operating system. So if you have a physical server, a physical SQL server, for example, you would install the software just as you would any other application in Windows, and it will be able to do its thing. Uh, you'll start seeing benefits within a couple of minutes. If you're installing it to a virtualized environment, you would install the software into the guest virtual machine, into the Windows operating system there. And if you have tens, hundreds, or even thousands of machines, we can provide you with a very easy to use management console that you can use as your central point of command and control and use that to deploy the software across the network with just a few clicks. Um, you can use it to um, control the licensing, gather reports from all of the machines and so on. So that makes it very, very simple and, and easy and, and most importantly, fast to deploy. And if you want any assistance with that, again, you're very welcome to reach out to one of our engineers or even me if you want to. Um, and more than happy to help you with that. Um, Okay, so Atul says, does it need any specific uh, Microsoft SQL version? No, um, you, you can use pretty much any SQL version um, that you want. Um, it's more important what operating system are you running SQL in. The Velocity software is for Windows Server 2008 R2 and later. Okay, um, so... The, the SQL version is less relevant. Um, it will work with pretty much any SQL version that's running in 2008 R2 or later. The testing that we did with Microsoft in order to get Microsoft to certify Velocity with uh, SQL was actually done using SQL 2016 in their Azure cloud, um, if that helps. But yeah, any any SQL version will, will be just fine with the software. And the reason for that is that we're not actually touching the contents of a storage I.O. packet directly. We're not trying to do anything clever like on-the-fly dedupe or, or compression. No, we're not delaying a write or anything like that. What we're simply doing is allowing the Windows write driver to make more intelligent choices than it otherwise would. 
So it's still the standard NTFS write driver in Windows that is generating a standard NTFS storage I.O. packet and then sending it down the stack to the storage controller. So you know, it's, it's more important that um, you, you have a look at the, at the Windows version that you want to install the software on than it is the, uh, the version of SQL. It'll work with pretty much any version of, of SQL. In fact, I don't know of one that it doesn't work with. Um, Okay, Brad says, does this need to be installed on a SQL server or can it be installed on a Hyper-V host and work for multiple VMs on the same host? So that's a good question. Technically, you can install the software on the Hyper-V host. Um, but what you'll be doing then is not avoiding those split IO situ situations that are getting generated inside the VM and the cache is then one level removed in effect. So I would usually recommend putting the software into the VMs, but if it's a, a, a Windows server with a Hyper-V Hyper role, yes, you absolutely can. Um, what might be helpful though is to reach out to an engineer just to help you cap the amount of RAM that Velocity would use for its uh, caching so that we can make sure that there's enough memory left free at all times for you to spin up a new VM that has a very large RAM requirement. But yeah, so yes, technically it's possible to do it like that, but I would usually recommend putting the software into the into the virtual machines themselves. Uh, right, so Morali says, please let us know the price structure for licenses. Okay, so in the interest of transparency, um, the velocity server license, which is basically one license per machine, whether it's a VM or a physical server, is £400. Um, that's the, the free copy that everybody's going to receive. The host license is, oh goodness, from memory, it's about £4,000. Um, so if you're hosting more than about 10 VMs on a, on a physical host, then that becomes the more economic option. So I, I hope that answers that. Um, so, Paul says, will this work with SQL always on availability group? Yes, it will. Um, now, if you're um, using an active, active Windows cluster, then we would turn the RAM caching off by default uh, to err on the side of caution. If it's an active passive cluster, um, there's, it, it will work absolutely fine, even with the RAM caching turned on. So I, I hope that helps answer that. Um, now let's see if we have any other, other questions. Goodness, so many questions have come through. This is really good. Either I've done a terrible job of explaining it, or you guys are really curious. Either way, <laughs> I'm very happy. <laughs> uh, So that's good. I think I've handled everything in the chat box. Let's just check that Q&A window if I can bring it up here. Oh, it's not letting me do that. Let me just stop sharing for a moment, see if it'll appear. Yes, here we go. Okay, good. I can see the Q&A session now uh, more easily. So Ethel says, is this a trial software with one month validity? So the NFR, no, it's a full uh, version that's yours to keep. That's, that's our gift to you. Um, everyone will be receiving a copy of that today. Um, it's valid for, to install on one machine, um, and it will never expire. That, that's, that's yours to keep. The trialware software that you can download from conducive.com slash try, that is fully featured trialware that you can install onto all of your machines and it will work for 30 days and then the software after 30 days would become inert and the machines would go back to running with the same performance as they would before the Velocity software was installed. And if you then wanted to change that trialware installation into the full version because you, you like what you've seen, um, you buy the software, we send you out a, a license file, and without having to reinstall anything, you just apply that license file and it changes the trialware into the full version for you. 
Um, right. It's, I think. I think that is all of the questions. So I. First of all, I'm, I'm really stoked that so many of you stayed on for this amount of time. I really hope that this has uh, been helpful and interesting. Just to reiterate, you are more than welcome to uh, reach out to us if we can be of any assistance, if you want to get the trialware, if you want help setting it up, installing it, interpreting the results, making sure you get the best results, you're very welcome to get in touch. Thank you again, everybody, for, for joining me today. And uh, yeah, take care. Have a, have a very good rest of day. Thank you.